YouTube video if you're in the garage at any point in time. about having anything set for any extended period of time just hard on everything start to get corrosion and parts aren't moving and they just kind of seize together
Well, this is what I managed to get myself into today. Got the front rotors off. They are supposed to come detached from this hub. As you can see, the little retaining screws, two of them there. That is actually supposed to separate from the rotor, but I'm guessing how corroded it uh, is. You can kind of see the corrosion around the outside edge there. I imagine it's probably just corroded stuck, so I'm just going to leave it mounted, both of them. Pull the bearings out. I already have the front bearings out from when I pulled them off the spindle. Pull the bearings out, get new bearings, get new seals. The bearings did sound kind of growly. Um, I'll just mock them up on the lathe, turn them how they are. The rears, I don't really have a choice. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to have to destroy the rotors to get them off. So, in light of not doing that, I'm probably just going to um, try and hit the rear rotors the best I can with like maybe a, a sanding wheel on my grinder or something like that. But I finally did decide to pull the pistons out of the front calipers actually the rear calipers too but um it was a nightmare i'm sure as you'll see in the video it fought me and fought me it was only one of them but man it was a pain the rears pretty much came right out i don't I have the rebuild so kit for the rear bit, calipers you know, at the moment so i don't know if i can get I decent the availability on them through work i may it's just end up getting new rear out. calipers like, oh, um boy. But I will, I do plan on <laughs> taking the cal these you know, pistons in, about. sandblasting the inside of them, hitting the outside of them with a wire wheel. Um, I know I didn't have very good availability on the front brake pads, so I'm probably just going to dress them, maybe sandblast the back of them and hit them with some sandpaper. But I mean, there's a little bit of meat left on them still. So, it's not ideal, not what I want to do, but... That's what I'm going to do for the time being. Uh, the rears, I probably will get new pads because they were pretty shot. They were pretty well worn down. Um, the rotors overall don't look too bad, though. These should clean up pretty good. The rears, they'll kind of just be what they'll be. But that's uh, what I managed to get into today. Doesn't look like a whole lot, but tearing them pistons out, that was a battle. Getting the... Knocking those screws loose out of the hubs. Uh, you had to use an impact screwdriver and then ended up wasting my effort doing all that. Uh, I did pull the rear caliper brackets off as well, trying to get the rear brake drum or uh, brake rotors off. So, but that's what I managed to get into. I may end up pulling those backing plates off and sandblasting them. And, uh, spray them maybe with like a silver or chassis black. I'm not too sure. Still don't spin. Kind of figure silver would probably stand out, but they were like a silverish color from the factory. I want, I think they're aluminum, but maybe sandblast them and give them a, a coat of aluminum paint, aluminum color paint. The rears, I cannot get those things off to save my life. That would most likely end up destroying it, trying to get it off there, so. Same way with the other side. But, slowly making some progress. Definitely enjoy having the workbench here. Got the light all set up. and Makes life much easier having it right here next to the lift. But that'll be it for tonight. I will catch you guys tomorrow.
right, we got the new bearings here, new seals, rotors turned, cleaned up, and refreshed. Got my fresh new GM Chrysler European Japanese vehicles wheel bearing grease. Nice and red. I'm pretty sure that it was red when it came out of what was packed into it before. The hot air balloon. one of these into that. That is the passenger side rotor right there. Already sandblasted the hat and on the inside is actually on a spinal cut. But it is going to All be right, so we have the same exact rotor, the rotor they just are going to look totally different. Proper just take this center nut, torque it to 25 foot pounds, rotate the rotor over a couple times, then back it off, then hand tight, and then you set your, put your lock and set your cotter pin.
Well, that was interesting. I thought there was, the neighbor was lighting a fire with a blowtorch, and it was a hot air balloon going overhead. But then, yeah, I will put a powder pin down through there. That's the little retainer. That is a first cut. See all the rust dust flying off of it. Yeah, it actually, I'm gonna go write the final cut on this one. Looks good, the back looks good. That little bit that you see going around. That's all there is to making your junk less junk. And there's rear rotors. The other side is on as well.
lift. I do want to do a rundown over uh, what the car costs, um, everything that I have into it up to this point, um, potential, you know, spendings yet on the car, but it's definitely getting a lot closer. I'm excited to take it for its first spin here. Five foot pounds. The way that the brakes were partially locked up, the way that, as you can see, the, I haven't washed this thing since I've had it. You can see how much grime and filth is still all over this thing. I don't want to wash it quite yet just because of the way that the sunroof is. That's definitely one of the next uh, biggest projects. Probably in the meantime, I will change out the dash, but the sunroof is definitely a big must just because it leaks if it's not taped up really bad. So right now it's going to be put on the back burner just for a little bit so I can finish up other projects and I am getting ready to announce something here very shortly that I'm going to attempt to do. I don't know how it's going to play in my favor. I don't know if it's going to work at all. but. I think it will be very interesting to say the least. Um, it's going to be very difficult. <laughs> I don't know if it's even possible, but I'm going to give it a try. But uh, that's the uh, current situation on the RX-7. We did take it for a short uh, drive around the block. I didn't want to go too far just because technically it shouldn't even be on the road. So didn't want to get in trouble, didn't want to break any walls or anything. So, but. This thing, uh, it, it's coming along, it's impressing me, it's uh, taking me back. Uh, I didn't know how to feel last night driving it. I, <clears throat> it's honestly pretty emotional just to be driving this thing. And even though it's not near as in good a condition, you know, paint wise, the interior is pretty much just about as nice as what mine was, minus the cracks in the dash. Everything else though is really, really nice on the inside. So it, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it yet. I don't, I had a long talk with Matt, who you'll see in the Mirage video that I'm gonna be posting here. But uh, he, I don't know. We had a long talk about it. I was thinking about 
getting it running, get, making it really nice and flipping it to start into other projects. But he kind of, we had a pretty deep talk about how a Turbo 2 FC pretty much is me in a car. Like it pretty much sums me up. So I missed out on the last 10 years of having a Turbo 2 RX-7. Not that I couldn't have bought one and not that I probably couldn't have acquired my other one back, but things just happen. Um, other vehicles, having the scat pack and the truck and um, definitely been a journey, <clears throat> but it's kind of one of those things where I just don't know how to feel about it. I um, was actually able to salvage I'm these happy rear because rotors. I have another turbo tube, but I'm sad and because I missed out on the past 10 just years. temporary, of same with the front. My original turbo until tube. I actually, uh, so get if you haven't to figured it out, better. Uh, why like I don't a have a car yet, you'll have some to good hawk pads that or up, something that's a I'm good. I'm not proud of it. Um, all around but, pad for um, you know more spirited yeah, driving. Yeah, it's just or one of those things like where track day. It's uh, not anything like. It came along a lot faster than I thought. Not as fast as I could have gotten it running because I could have done the brakes a long time ago. Of, but I just had um, other projects. Uh, all the work that I have to do, you know, for uh, my normal needing uh, to stop daily job. So I don't know. Um, getting them warm if you're doing some trail breaking. And, yeah, I don't know, just <laughs> I'm pretty excited about it. It's lines, definitely a motivation right now, to uh, just uh, refreshing everything it. that came on the car just it's to just get it rolling and probably another running and driving around to hopefully enjoy this thing it. before the end but of the summer. So that's uh, and that's the plan. That's the RX7 as um, she is now. It's I did want to rather blast um, these ahead of time that and then paint years them and, it's and then turn them um, that way. You know, drivable. The, so rotors and everything still has were, issues with the vacuum know, kind of leaks that I have to fix. It's it definitely going to need tires. Thing, but the tires ride like I know that in the future, you know, in the near future, depending on so. if the car stays around, uh, that I'm going to end up wanting to change them out yeah, anyway. So the interior, for right now, this will work just fine. Fix the sunroof. Um, just kind of go over everything, clean up the the underside when I had it up in the air. I did see a two spots of rust that are probably no bigger than you just know, got done giving the brakes one last that. spray down with brake parts cleaner probably would ever get worse i did have to bleed these by there, myself so i'll probably have to have somebody help me re-bleed them but so. it's got a really good um, pedal um <coughs> well that's the, it for now on the arc seven none of the calipers uh, are sticking which is a good plus uh the parking brake does actually work i will eventually go because it is do the brakes free at the moment the there the but and i did just the check it so it's actually really yeah, it really low you only have to move it just a little bit and it's good and solid and firm i'm pretty impressed but you can kind of see the brake parts cleaner evaporating off of it there but one step closer i know that i'm not completely done with the brake rebuild because I'm still waiting on the actual rear caliper rebuild. That's why I haven't actually sandblasted them and cleaned them up or anything, but I got all new pads coming, um, new rear seals, new rear piston boots. Um, I did buy new rear rotors, or not necessarily buy, but I did order them in, so, but um, I think I'm just gonna stick with these for right now, just because it is kind of a, see how fast, or see how, inexpensively I can get this thing back on the road so that will save I mean if you're a cash customer and not actually working at a parts store you'd probably you know it'd save you like 90 hundred bucks where me it'd save me about 60 bucks at employee pricing so but that is where I'm at right now getting ready to I'm gonna clean up the inside of the the wheel where it mounts onto the hub there maybe just wire wheel it and Put just a real light coating and never sees on there um but yeah i'm getting ready to take it on a i can't say it's a maiden voyage because i have driven it around the block just to check and see um how it ran but i don't want to go too far with the exhaust how it is but just to take it around the block real quick i think i'll be fine give it a shot and see how the brakes act do any more anything further
one last thing before I go out on this little adventure. See all this leaves and cobwebs and everything. I'm gonna drop this belly pan here. Make sure there's no leaves. Well, you can see there is some leaves in there. Just drop that out. Run the shop vac in through here a little bit just to go over everything. I'd hate to burn this thing down. And that, my friends, concludes the end of the brakes for now. This is indeed a running, driving, and now stopping RX-7. The last time this car was registered was 2003. So that means that this thing has been sitting for 16 years unregistered. I don't know if it hasn't ran that long, but the way that the fuel...
One other quick thing that I wanted to throw in on this is uh, current project cost and go down the list of everything, um, including buying the car to what I've done so far um, to where it's at today. But uh, the car, I purchased it, um, believe it or not, April Fool's Day this year. Uh, I bought it for $500. Um, the guy really didn't want to sell it. He almost didn't. He, after I bought the car, um, I had to go and get a trailer to trailer it home. Not only that, um, how far the car was sunk into the ground in his yard, uh, needing a winch to be able to pull it out of the yard, let alone up onto the trailer. Um, he almost offered me more money so that way we, he could keep it because it was his dad's car and his dad passed away a few years ago and it's pretty it was sentimental to him so hence why uh, if you watched the other earlier videos of the arc 7 uh, the name Jezebel for the car that was his dad named that car or named this car Jezebel so that's uh, I kind of I have the keychain that his dad had with the keys and everything so I just I don't know it's, I'm weird like that, just kind of trying to keep the sentimental part of it going uh, along because I guess I'll go sure into, he would want to do the same the, thing for, you know, being his dad's car. Next I biggest project, value with my I don't know car. if I'm going to be able to pull it off. So, or just one of the things. I'm going to grab you guys off the stand here. here. But it's just something that I want. Um, um, I for all my DSM fans, it was sorry about the mess again, but... Um, this is Clay's 2G. Slave in it. It was up tight as can be. We're going to attempt to get uh, this running by the shootout. Today is August 5th. Uh, the spoiler, I have to look it up, to but I know the shootout is something like the, the 17th the through the 19th or something property. like that. But that I have We're going to try and have it running by Sunday and, for the actual DSM um, shootout. I don't, I don't know if he's going to try and drive it to the shootout or trailer it. But um, it really shouldn't um, be all that terrible, I, I guess, to try and get it to the shootout. Parts. It's just a lot of bolting stuff together. It's not really any major things that we have to do. Uh, sort through some wiring, side, uh, fab some intercooler pipes, um, it is put it together. And that's pretty much it. Get it running and driving, and I'll have to try and get a a little bit of a street tune on it. But that isn't but where it gets interesting. This one was fine. Um, We're going to attempt to get this see. running for the shootout. Cut defender. I knew that I wanted to put an but exhaust then, on this, and nobody actually offers a fuel cut defender. We are not doing one, anymore. but we're going to try to do two car. cars that so you finished. Really lucky and found one for, for the shootout because the S4 and S5 are different. The we're going to try and get Clay's car, um, and we're going to try and get this car sensor. done. So I did this find is going to require me pulling some strings, and, and it's definitely going to be um, pretty stressful, but I think it'll be good I content and try to uh, those were, get both of these uh, running literally in a week and a half's cents. time. Uh, so this one's the same way. I have to do a little bit of fab running. work, just like those on Clay's car. I shouldn't have to do any exhaust before. work to Clay's car, but this uh, one we will. We're going to utilize the little hole that's already in the bumper there for the um, bumper exhaust. Thing, like, you know, um, I have said I work have a little bit of air cooler pipes so and then just put it together. Really Same way for this However, thing. Um, both uh, cars are on DSM link, so I'll high, have to like uh, try and do time, some quick uh, street tuning on like it and get them. I won't necessarily say dialed in, but I'll get them pretty close. So. This is a um, old school bolt on precision turbo car. Uh, I can't remember the exact size of it. I want to say it's a 5252, if that sounds right. Um, Clay's car, the 2G in the garage, that is an FP black car. So we are going to attempt to get both cars running for the shootout. I don't know if this is even possible, but it's going to starter brush set. It's going to be fun. And the, really the best part of it is the SRT4. I mean, I still have to finish that before I can even start on these two cars. So, so I'm literally going to have like a week starter, I know that my to do other, these cars. Car every once in a while I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to man to manage to get it off of work, but I'm going to try. 
if I can have a week solid of me just working out here and everybody coming over to help, I think we can be able to pull it off. But uh, that's the plan. Um, it's kind of exciting, kind of stressful, but I don't know. It's crunch time, and what better way to try and set a goal to other than to, you know, what better way than to try and make it to the shootout with them? So. That's the plans, uh, all my DSM guys. I hope you're on board. It's about to get serious. Those were like the economy line. They weren't.